City Kelowna, we have Robin Stobel, a digital transformation analyst, and Sem Semmer Shada, who is a business systems analyst. Please welcome them up. Welcome everyone. We are Robin Stobel and Simmer Chata from the Digital Transformation Team at the City of Kelowna. Today we are excited to present an overview of the City of Kelowna's Development Engineering Memo Hub. In this presentation, we will demonstrate how we have used Microsoft Power Platform to create an automated application for generating development engineering memos. These memos are required for various types of development applications in the city, such as subdivisions, rezoning, and building permits. The application collects and verifies data from different sources, such as our GIS databases, property information systems, and development applications and applies the logic and bylaws defined by the engineering team. The application then produces a memo that outlines the engineering requirements for the proposed development, such as water and sewer servicing, access and transportation, stormwater management, lot grading, and more. We will show how this application has streamlined and simplified a previously manual process, saving about 40 staff hours per week and improving operational efficiency and service delivery. Originally created using the uh, Microsoft Word template, the previous method required manually collecting data to complete each section of the memo from various mapping systems, property systems, and development applications. This process demanded approximately 40 staff hours per week involving six staff members and incurred costs of approximately $100,000 in staff time annually. After reviewing the time spent versus the possible time savings, if we can automate gathering the required data, our digital transformation team set to work on this new innovative opportunity. Each week we held meetings with, with the product owners to outline the tasks for that period. In the subsequent week, we would demonstrate the new features and then proceed to plan for the upcoming week's activities. Once the new features are demonstrated and approved, we move them to the user acceptance testing phase to, for staff to test and provide feedback while we work on the next set of weekly activities. By working iteratively, staff can start seeing real-time savings before the project is even completed. I will now pass the mic over to Simmer to go over the technical aspects of this application. Um, <clears throat> thank you, Robin, uh, for the introductions and explaining um, the why. So what I'll go through uh, right now is how we actually implement these changes. So um, the, the challenge we had during this application development was um, how we um, get the data because uh, we, uh, the data that we needed for this application was stored in um, four to five, <coughs> sorry, four to five different sources. Um, as, and uh, the, the main time that the staff was spending on is gathering that data. So what we did was, uh, was collect that data and uh, made some logical decisions based on that. So I'll start with, uh, I'll start with GIS. Um, as anyone who has used ArcGIS would know that um, it is a, it's a very powerful application. Everything about a particular property um, is stored in GIS, but it's stored in multiple layers. Um, if you exactly don't know where to look for, it can get very cumbersome to use. So what we did in this scenario is find out uh, what attributes we actually need for each uh, for this application in we ended up with about 55 attributes um, from, uh, and so we created a query that uh, gets, uh, that as soon as you feed in a property, 
um, in property address. It gets you all the information of, from those 55 attributes. Um, and then after, um, after getting the data, we actually save it into a Power Apps collection. Uh, we do this using Power App, Power App Made Flow. Um, and if you don't know what a Power App collection is, then just think of it as a fancy table. Uh, it's just a simple term for that. But um, well, uh, once we have that information, um, we use that information, um, we use that collection, we reference it uh, to use to make decisions for our future. Uh, queries and logics that we have made. Um, so the other other um, uh, place where we had a lot of our data was in SQL, in on our SQL server. Um, so we have uh, multiple applications that we use that save our data to SQL, uh, uh, but it's stored in different tables. Uh, so what we ended up doing is uh, we ended up using Dataflow. So it's again a Microsoft uh, app, um, option. What, with Dataflow, what you can do is combine multiple tables. You can get data from anywhere, actually, not just SQL. Um, but in this instance, we took the data and we combined it. We actually um, trimmed the data, massaged it to exactly what, how we wanted it, what fields we wanted. Um, we applied filters, removed columns, all of those fancy things, and we saved them into a Dataverse table. Um, again, same concept. We're going to use, we, we're going to query that data, Dataverse table for all the future logics. So this is how we collected um, uh, most of our data. There were some other instances, but. Um, this is kind of how our application looks like. So what you see on the left-hand side um, is how we uh, developed the application. We went with a very basic um, approach to, to how the UX looks like. Um, the reason being it's a very highly data-driven application, so there's too much data, and we didn't want it uh, from the customer feedback uh, from the engineering technologists who's, who are going to fill out this. Uh, they didn't want it scroll bars and things like that, so we made it. So it's everything is in this page. Um, so on in, in this on the application side, if if you see on the left hand side, uh, we have um, the application, uh, and then on the right, where, what you see is subcomponents in Power Apps. Uh, but and each of those subcomponents, uh, DP site specific, general, all those subcomponents actually refer to a uh, section in the memo that um, uh, that is gets filled out. Uh, we did this approach so that it's easier for the um, yeah, the, tech, the, the engineering technologists uh, to refer back when they're looking at the application and they know exactly what paragraph they're editing or what uh, section they're editing for. So each of those are actual sections in, our, in the memo. So uh, I'll, I won't bore you with all of those, but I wanted to discuss uh, two, uh, three, uh, three of those, um, DP site specific one being the most complicated one that we did. Uh, so with this specific one, uh, what we did was, uh, well, I'll start back actually. Uh, uh, how an engineering technologist uh, does this is they, they get assigned a request um, and they know the file number. That's all they uh, know at this point. They come in to this application, they enter the file number, each file, uh, and once they do that from the data that we pulled from multiple applications, we know all the property information. That includes the address, the zoning, all those things. So uh, whatever we know gets filled out and uh, filled out on the right, um, sorry, on the left, and then on the right, uh, it has made some decision, it has made some suggestions, and if the uh, technicians think that they can change them, uh, they need to change them, then they do, else they just submit it the way it is. So, for example, on, on this property on Gordon Drive, uh, it has one fronting street, three adjacent street. So we're listing all those streets here. Um, and we went one step further on this. We actually got the road classification of the section of the uh, property rather than just the whole road. Because, for example, um, this Gordon Road is one of the major arterial road, so it can have multiple street classifications. Um, but we pull the exact section uh, where this property resides and get those details. The reason we needed that is because uh, down there we have uh, the driveway must access from um, and we needed that information because 
Um, most cities have the, uh, their own bylaws around it, but uh, the, I th uh, from what we understood from our side is it has to be kind of from the lowest classification. So we have a set, a set of 50 uh, classifications, uh, and they're, uh, this driver must always access from the lowest one. So uh, those are some of the logics that we had to build using, um, using uh, the help from our engineering team. We sat down with them, we figured out what we can do, and this is what we came up with. Um, so some of the other fields that you see there are just, uh, so if, they, if the engineering technician thinks that they can turn these things on, uh, they need this for the application, they can turn them on, it will add the paragraph. If they think if they don't need it, then they leave it alone. Um, where, uh, at the bottom there, where you see calculated values, this is where we give them all the values that are uh, that we have found. The re uh, did, if they can't change these values, the reason we show them is so that uh, they can make an informed decision for other attributes at the top, and uh, they're not left in the blind. Um, the other section, uh, briefly, that I wanted to discuss was uh, water and fire protection system. So um, I'll go from the bottom on that one where you see the calculated values. Um, I don't know if it's, it might be hard to read, but uh, there's like four, uh, four values there um, that we have uh, derived from the, uh, from the zoning. Uh, and what we, uh, what we do is basically uh, we have used some logic, which I'll show in the next slide, um, to make those decisions and uh, decisions for, the, for them. And um, yeah, so they, they can edit those decisions and they're based on bylaws. Uh, so if the bylaws change, we have to change them, but until they change, we'll just leave them as it is. We have some drop downs, we have some uh, input values where they can just enter uh, freeform text. Um, and yeah, just uh, all of those. Uh, items. Uh, so this is a, a simple logic example that I wanted to show of what kind of logics we have done in the background. Um, we have, uh, it's probably one of the simplest ones we did. For, so, in this, so in this case, for example, uh, we're, we're trying to find what kind of upgrades the water system needs. Um, and we, if it's in this zone and the water service size is this, then it doesn't need upgrade. So those kind of if statement logics that we have made we made some other um, more complicated logic as well. And so it's a very logical driven app and all these logics are based on our, uh, our bylaws. So that removes the um, understanding of an engineering technician uh, of what they think this, uh, they might need an upgrade or not. Um, it removes that part and makes the informed decision based on this, this information. Um, the, last section, the last section that I wanted to just review on is um, the transportation and roadway section. So um, uh, nothing too fancy on this one, uh, but uh, what I wanted to show here is uh, so, um, how we can add multiple paragraphs into that memo um, with different values, which they didn't have the ability for before. They would have to copy paste some things, whereas now they can just go to the street. Uh, it will show all the streets that are adjacent, and uh, we'll just show, add the paragraphs based on what the value they select and drop down. Um, in the next slide, what I want to show is a very quick um, application. So how you can actually enter this application and how fast uh, it is. I've, I've skipped one slide here, uh, but uh, so at the end of the day, once you click submit, uh, the, once you click submit, this is uh, once you click submit, this is the application that is uh, created. It's in a Word format. We use uh, Power Automate for this as well, uh, and to massage the data and to make it exactly with like bullet list and all those items, there is, uh, we used Encodian plugin uh, for doing this. Um, and uh, this happens as soon as they uh, hit submit on the application and takes like five seconds and we're done. Uh, and it saves into a SharePoint folder that we have, um, uh, we have de decided for them. Okay, so this is the, applic this is the application. I'm just going to turn that on. So 
So it just pulled in all the three. Um, so it pulled, as soon as they've entered the information about the permit, uh, about the file number, it got all the three properties that are uh, associated to it. It got all the, uh, see, uh, all the uh, uh, streets and decided which one uh, should the driveway come from. And you can turn on uh, um, anything that you want. You can decide if it's a ca if you want cash in lieu or any other uh, values for each of the streets. And that is it. You click submit and you get the uh, uh, you have the memo. Uh, so now they can go in and review the memo um, and make any changes if they have if they need to. Um, so. The application can be done under five minutes if they have all the information that they need. Um, I'll pass it over to Robin now. So the current process, the application is streamlined, a manual process, saving about 40 staff hours per week and enhancing operational efficiency and service delivery. Now that we have the app working for development engineering memos, the next phase is to add in other types of memos such as building, rezoning, subdivision, development variance reports to council. Thank you all for attending. We hope you enjoyed your week at MISA this week.